You are about to listen to an exclusive interview on Maximum Threshold Radio. Thanks for listening to us at MaximumThreshold.net. Horns up, fists in the air. There we go, there we go. Maximum Threshold, you're on the air. Hello? Hello? Uh, yeah, this is Mandy. Hey, Mandy. Mandy. Oh, wow, this really sounds like crap. <laughs> <laughs> How about now? Is that better? Yes, that's a lot better. What did you do? Oh, I had music playing on the background there. Plus, I just found out my recorder wasn't even recording. I don't know how long it was going on like that. Oh, my God. So, so you're pulling a Mandy. Yeah, it's, well, it's on now. It's you're, working now. You're missing that radio gold again. <laughs> how are you feeling? Uh-oh, something happened again. Um, let, me, let me shut some stuff down. Hold on this is only Are you a, having difficult technicalties? Uh, we haven't. It's only his 320th show. <laughs> 324. <laughs> well, it takes a while to get good at it. <laughs> I don't know how many more you need to do. <laughs> Probably about um, at least four. Okay. I'm thinking <laughs> at this point. So how are you feeling? Much better. Jesus. I mean, yeah, that was a bad one. I think it took about five years off of my lifespan. Damn. Damn. Would you have tapeworms or something? <laughs> Honestly, I wish. <laughs> that would have been less of an issue. Damn. Did you lose a lot of weight and stuff like that from your cold? Uh, not really because, you, you know, you just kind of lay there. You don't have anything else to do, so you just oh. you just eat. It yeah. doesn't really help. Dom, but, Dom uh, has a tapeworm. He's looking awfully skinny. Um, yeah, tapeworms. That's the best diet ever. Looking to lose Better weight. Crack. Oh, well, yeah, crack. Tapeworm is the best diet it ever. It will because it's cheap, but they will clean you out. But if you go to crack, though, then you'll lose your teeth. Oh. Tapeworms, you won't lose your teeth. So there's the benefits to it. Uh, we did a little research I'm on just, that. I'm just afraid to know how you even found this out. Oh, yeah, you got you got to look at all terms. I used to work for GNC. And I, I guess I was a spokesman for one of the, um, the leading movements in weight loss. Bowel movement. <laughs> <laughs> and after all the research I did, you know, all these people coming to me asking how they can lose weight. You know, what's the best thing to use? You know, it, and tapeworms seem to always work with no matter who had problems. They always were able to lose a lot of weight. So what they did was they asked you what you did and did the complete and opposite. You are, you are correct. But 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 isn't there side effects as well? I mean, doesn't isn't doesn't that mean that you have severe itchy ass? I think that's the uh, well, you can pull them out the, once that's they start a medical term itchy ass. Right? Well, once they start creeping out through your your hole, then you just pull them out, then you're done. Or you can you can just <laughs> scoot across the carpet like a dog. <laughs> oh my god! I mean, you know the problem with me is you tell me shit like that, and I see it in my head. Well, that's I what we're doing too. Mind. <laughs> So I'm scarred for life. Just imagine <laughs> you scooting across your couch uh, like that. Then with a tapeworm dragging out behind you. Thank screaming. God. I've never seen my <laughs> my dog is never dragged like that. Ooh. That, <laughs> well, you know why they do that? It's because they have um oh they have they're, anal they, glands. Yeah, their glands ex- expunged. That's right. Thank you, God he's never needed that. You can lubricate with your fingers and stuff. No. Well your dog probably needs like a was a two finger two finger queen. What? what with my with my dog? No, with with Michael. He's my, got um. I got a Boston Terrier. He couldn't even take a pinky. Well, your tongue then, okay? <laughs> Not for a tapeworm. That's disgusting. <laughs> oh, a tapeworm. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, you guys. I mean, there, there is no other radio interview like this one. I, would, I swear to God. We try to make it memorable. <laughs> well, that it is. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we try to make our interviews a lot different than. You know, most shows, um, instead, because you can go to any other station and, you know, you know, Mandy, you can go on there and they'll go over and they'll talk the same stuff, you know, what was it like, you know, back in the day, World War Three, and, you know, what was the best stuff that you put out? Who was the, the best artist that you worked with? You can hear all those things, but nobody's going to talk about, you know, anal glands and stuff like that and tapeworm diets to start off it's an so interview. It's so true. Yep. yep. It's so true. I think you guys are geniuses. Thank you. We've been working on we've been working on our skills. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I'm back in <laughs> so, some kind of a hell. <laughs> so, so what's 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 new and exciting since the last time we talked to you? Well, 
um, we, we're finally getting ready to, uh, you know, put uh, at least a snippet of of the new stuff out. Uh, I think is a Tuesday or Thursday. I'm not sure. I haven't spoken to the label guys about that yet. So that I'm pretty excited about, and um, you know, just just being just being able to walk upright again is pretty exciting after a while. <laughs> yeah, I can believe it. Do you have any bed sores? Do you have any what? Bed sores from laying on the, being down and out? No, because because I rotate, kind of like, you know, oh, like when you're cooking a chicken, you know, you, you don't want to keep yeah, it. Yeah, turn, don't burn. <laughs> yeah, bed. exactly. That's me. I kept, I kept rotating, so <laughs> no bed sores. That's me. You got to turn, don't burn. You know they make a bed at the hospitals that has like a roller or something that makes you move? They need it, yeah. Yeah, like so you don't get bed sores and shit. Are you serious? Do, do they put that thing up your ass too? If you ask nicely, yeah. <laughs> if you ask nicely, I, like, I, I shall remember that. I like when uh, when I have to go for an exam. I put the I put the the, the little cape or dress on backwards and leave it open. <laughs> you always walk around dropping your keys. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, let's go. Let's get involved. Are you vol- you, all, you always volunteer for colonoscopies yeah. all the time. You were just here yesterday. Can you massage know, but my I, prostate? I, I think I'm you, a dentist. Think, <laughs> <laughs> oh man, does does oh. that make? I mean, you're really preoccupied with the backside. Does that does that mean you're a little bit you know a little bit funny that way? No, he's just that's a, my dream actually. A, it's told, only <laughs> most most of my close friends know that my dream. Is actually to become gay at some point, you know. Wow, it's only gay because if you push a, back. There must be a reason why they call them gay. They don't call them the unhappy. So I'm That's thinking, right. you know, I'd probably be a lot happier if I could, you know, swing swing over to that side. But well, you got to get problem is that you got. I don't even like my own dick. So <laughs> you got to volunteer for one of those um, gay pride um, parades that they have, and just roll out there, you know, with your Van Helsing get up, and I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure you could turn people over to the dark side. Yeah. Just where well, you're... But see, the thing is, I my problem is, like I said, I don't even like that. But I, I yeah. here's, you know, I have another theory, and maybe you can help me. Maybe, yeah. maybe I am on the right track. You know, have you heard people say, "Well, Johnny, isn't he a little gay?" Mm. What does that mean? Does little... that mean you don't really want to suck a dick? You just want to like poke somebody in the crotch with the tip of your finger like just... once or twice a week? And I know because... that's when he like, gets likes to get hit. Just forehead, a little gay. It. Just a little gay means like you like to swirl your tongue around the the head of a <laughs> okay. penis, but not put it in your mouth. You play. And, you know, and then you've heard people say, "Well, Jerry, isn't he really gay?" What does that mean? Does that mean one day you find yourself with one dick in your butt, one in your mouth, you're jerking off two more, and you're going, "Wow." <laughs> it I'm sounds really like gay. you've been there. <laughs> <laughs> now, see, and here's what I'm thinking. If you can be a little gay up to real gay, if there's varying degrees, mm-hmm. then really all I have to do is find somebody who I want to poke in the crotch with the tip of my finger once or twice a week. If I can find that, then maybe one day I can work my way up to become semi-gay mm-hmm. or real gay even. You know? Look, look <laughs> once you got balls on your chin, you're gay. It, th- there's no exactly. there's no little gay. And I'm not homophobic. Listen, yeah. I don't care. You wanna, not, if you want to <laughs> suck a dick, I'm suck a dick. <laughs> you want to suck one, suck one. It's just not going to be mine. You know? No, you, but you know what? You're just one of those judgmental people. It's like as soon as somebody has a dick in their ass, you call them gay, right? Or if you get bruises on the back of your thighs from the nuts hitting the I'm not. I'm not judging. I'm just saying. I mean, like, you know. I mean, I, I'm not the most masculine guy, but like you, you, like you said, you don't even like your own penis. Like sometimes I'll be jerking off, and I'm, I'm like, I'm gonna do this all day long, and and soon as like one drop of my semen hits my hands, I'm disgusted with myself, and I'm like, prayer. I never want to touch my penis ever again. I know. I mean, and besides. You never really agree with him. How many times in your life has your dick made you do something that you really regretted later on? And what does he do as soon as you're done with the evil deed? He goes to sleep, and you're stuck with the monster that he invited into your home. That's right, especially when you start using you know? it. When you start using it on an elevator to start pressing the buttons with it, and you look up and you notice <laughs> there's a camera there. <laughs> that really sucks. I will never touch an elevator <laughs> button again. 
in my life. Just poke it with the tip of your finger. And I use my knuckles. I never use my fingers. I use my elbow. <laughs> yeah, definitely don't don't touch anything after David did. <laughs> and, and no why, kidding. Why will my dog only lick the peanut butter off my balls but not my shaft? I Yeah, that's okay. a good question. You know that I always say love your pets, but don't love your pets. I'm just kidding. No, this, it's funny because... The, the the girl I'm dating, I was I was eating a a sandwich the other day, and like mm-hmm. I didn't feel like opening the jelly, so I just had peanut butter, and I went to give my dog a piece of it because he begs for everything. Mm-hmm. So I cut mm-hmm. a, I went to can him a pi- a piece, and I I was talking to her. I'm like the picky little fucker won't eat like, but he's begging, but he won't eat it. She's like, well maybe he's only used to licking peanut butter off your cock. Yeah, well yeah. <laughs> and I, I was, it was so funny that she just said it like matter of factly that I didn't know what to say, but I'm like, not not off the shaft. That's disgusting. Just the balls. <laughs> not off the shaft. Just the balls. <laughs> My God. <laughs> uh, I'm oh, kidding. I would never you have share. my brother. I would, I would never share peanut butter with my dog. So my, you know, the funny thing is, some of my friends are like, "You have an unhealthy relationship with that dog," and um, but I would they find unhealthy. Well, because I, I really like, I always put pictures of me and my dog up at, on Facebook, and I send them to people. And I are love. You, are you dressed? Are you dressed? When you yeah, yeah, yeah. With your dog? Yeah, no, I just I really love my dog, like in a non-sexual way. Like when I get home from work, and he's happy to see me. Mm-hmm. No matter what, like I could be gone all day, and you know, he's just happy to see me. And it's, oh, of no matter what, like I, I'm upset. He, he's like, he's like, I'll just come sit by you, and I'll fart in your face and make yeah. you feel better. Fancy dogs can do that. See, like I didn't know this. Now, 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 when he farts in your face, do you feel it move when that happens? No, but you know, <laughs> like I didn't know this before I got my dog that what that it would move if no, you that, in your face? no that no that that they. The, that specific breed just farts nonstop. I didn't know that. Okay, what, what, what breed are we talking about? He's a Boston Terrier. So he's, oh yeah. So yeah. he's got the yeah, swish they, in they, they do fart. And he doesn't. He doesn't like. He doesn't acknowledge it. Like I could be sitting there with my lady, and he'll come sit between us to cock block, and he'll just. He'll, all of a sudden, you'll smell. It'll smell like a rotten corpse. Actually, what it smells right. like. Someone took a shit and then a skunk came and sprayed it. Damn! And do you right. think that's not your woman? <laughs> yeah, it's her pedestrian. I know. I know what you're doing. You're going on the radio. You're blaming your dog for the next time you can cut one sitting there with your girlfriend and not be no. accused of anything. No. You're creating an alibi as we speak. That's no. pretty smart. No. Well, she thought that until one day she was over and I wasn't there and he was doing it. But you know the oh. diff- <laughs> the difference is is like his just like. Blow your nose up and disappear. Mine kind of hang around like that guy that doesn't leave the party, like for like an hour. It's like a fog. It it, it raises to nose level and it just hangs out for like an hour and does the boomerang. It goes around the room and introduces itself to everybody and then comes back and does it again. Dear God. <laughs> yeah. So I did. I read. I um. I read that you're a you're uh, an animal lover. Are you? You're not in, involved with PETA or anything like that, are you? No, because honestly, especially when you're when you're looking at these, you know, bigger organizations, all of a sudden it becomes about money, prestige, and you know, an ego again. It's it's really not so much about the animals anymore. You know, most of the money that goes into PETA does really does not end up with the animals. What, so I'm I'm. I'm not a big fan of that. I figure if you are going to do something, do it 100 percent, or don't do it at all. Okay. And especially if I'm not mistaken, I, you know, I could be wrong, but I think that they actually have Michael Vick now as a spokesperson, which that's like that's, that's like getting getting Hitler to be you know, to speak out on human rights. You know, it's just it's insane. Yes, and so are you? Um, are you like you know? Are you a vegetarian? No, I'm not. I'm not, you know... I, I, You're just an animal you know, lover, right? I, I know, I know. Some people, you know, would, would look at it and say, well, what's the difference? You know, I, I still 
think that there is a difference between, you know, eating, you know, between food and and uh, what Michael Vick does, you know, which is torturing and killing animals as for a hobby, yeah. you know, and watching them, you know, and, and not only doing that, but when a dog wouldn't wouldn't fight well enough, he'd lynch him and beat him with a baseball bat while he's having a couple of beers. I think that's a different mentality than a mother that, cook, that cooks a chicken dinner for her family. And a lot of people would like to throw that all in the same pot, but it just I don't I don't see it that way. I agree because you know, I'm a I'm an animal lover, but they could tell with all the peanut butter you go through. <laughs> Listen, I'll I'll sit on the couch eating a steak next to my dog. Yeah, you know, mm-hmm. and and I I have to change the channel when they have all those sad commercials with the animals oh, on. Yeah, that is the worst. No, it's I like. Know. How do they have so much money for? Because those commercials are like ten minutes long. Yeah. It seems like. How do they have all that money? They should invest that money instead of commercials. You know, every time I see those commercials, it always makes me want to order Chinese food. <laughs> oh does. my god! Seriously. No. <laughs> Twice eaten. I get hungry. You're gonna, dude, stuff. you are going to smoke a turd in hell for saying that. Just <laughs> well, now. listen. Everything <laughs> makes you hungry. Let's be honest. I can't help it. Mm. That no tapeworm. <laughs> You know what? He he's got a tapeworm, but he's inside the tapeworm. <laughs> he's eating the tapeworm That's as opposed right. to the other way around. I'll show that bitch who's running. <laughs> <laughs> My God, seriously. <laughs> He's a, he's a good I, eater. I'm going to have to ask my mother if she had a couple of other kids that she popped up <laughs> before or after because, you know, I, I, I feel really kind of warm towards you guys, almost like a family oh, thank kind you. of. Thank you. Thank you. I feel the connection. Yes. So did you – were you able to get off uh, off the sick bed and hit Nam up or – Yes, I did. Um, I wasn't 100% yet, but I had to go and at least spread the germs a little bit. Mm-hmm. I, I'm not a big fan of Nam, but um, you know, I, this year I decided to go because you know we we do have a single coming out and you know want to let people know that we're about to do some damage. So I went, and actually it wasn't as bad this year as it usually is. Have you have you gone? No, not yet. We we're looking forward to it one yeah. of these days. Oh, I'm telling you, man. It's like imagine just this. Big giant place with nine thousand tables. Everybody trying to sell you some grocery store lighting, and it's just I don't know. <laughs> it's <laughs> horrific. I mean, I would rather rot the. I would honestly, I would rather suck the rotten abortion out of a dead moose's uterus than having to go there every single year. That's pretty damn good. That's a, yeah. that's a visual. I was I was picturing that. Dom's trying. Dom is actually mm. look. Googling how to find a dead moose <laughs> carcass. He's pregnant. Googling a dead moose. <laughs> and by moose, I don't mean chocolate moose. Would you do? Would you do it with one of those silly straws? <laughs> <laughs> yes. If I don't ever have to go to Nam again, yes, bring it. I, you know, I've I've always wanted to go there. I just, you know, it just it's so far out, and it always comes at the wrong time of the year, like after Christmas. So it's really hard mm-hmm. to like save up to go to do something like that. But I think for like us, since you know we're we're just like in the middle of all the media thing and with the the bands and all that, and a lot of the connections stuff like that, it'd be more like a kid in a candy store with us because we'd run into so many people that we talk to like on the show who are related with us, and it's it'd be, it'd be I think it'd be a really cool thing for us, but. We're just waiting for one of these days where we actually can make our way out there. I think as long as you bring sunglasses so mm-hmm. you don't have to deal with the Ralph sliding and lots of alcohol, you should be fine. Oh, yeah. The Budef, that's, that's on the list. Yeah. <laughs> it's about as much fun as a root canal. <laughs> Damn. Those are, that's not that fun. <laughs> What's worse? I heard there are some people that pay for that. <laughs> What's worse, the root canal or the colonoscopy? Ooh. Well, I guess that depends on where you park it. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> <laughs> See, like, I've only had the, um, I got the finger once from my doctor, but I haven't got what, the colonoscopy yet. Now, now here's a tip. You know, if, if, if somebody's doing that to you, if your doctor's doing that to you, and you feel both hands on your back, there's a problem. Uh, you know, I thought it was weird when I felt both yeah. hands and I heard, uh, <laughs> 
My doctor. Yeah, he's, he's using the wrong instrument at that point. Was he saying this is going to hurt you more than it's going to hurt me? No, but he actually did say, I'm sorry I didn't take you out to dinner first. Because yeah. yeah. I asked him if I could get drunk before he gave me the finger. Did he ask if he could just spit on, your, spit on his finger first? <laughs> You're asking me? I never had it done, thank <laughs> God. So, uh, talk, go, no, I'm going to just go back to your music again, just for just for a couple minutes, and we can get back thrown okay. off track again. Uh, okay. So, when does this when does this all come out where people can actually get a hold of your your new stuff, new material? Well, I, honestly, I think at this point it's only going to be a, a few weeks. I got um, you. We're just trying to decide if we're going to wait to actually do a video along with it. Mm -hmm. Or if we're just going to put it up by itself and then do a video later on. But what we're going to do from that moment on is uh, we're going to, we're probably like every 12 weeks, um, we're going to, or, or 16 weeks, we're going to, we're going to put out some new stuff. Gotcha. Um, but it's, it's going to be, we're going to do it in reverse. You know, before you would do like a, you know, you do a full length CD and then you would put out the singles off of the CD. What we're going to do is we're going to put out, you know, 10 singles and eventually combine it into one CD. And it's going to be a, a bit of a, a, a concept album in the end. So it's almost like, you know, watching episodes of, of, of a story as it, you know, develops. Cool. So is there any plans to maybe tour? Yes, absolutely. I mean, that's, that's really the only reason why I'm doing this. You know, I, I don't really like spending time in the studio or, you know, to me, it's it's all about playing live. And mm -hmm. uh, if I'm not mistaken, I think they they have six or seven or maybe eight shows booked when we're trying to basically just fill the year. But um, we couldn't do that until we until we knew when we we're going to put the single out. But um, yeah, definitely. I mean, the rest of this year, we're going to play anytime, anywhere for thirty nine ninety five. Nice. Oh yeah, and they made a call within the next ten minutes. We'll also bring a kitchen knife set. <laughs> oh, it slices, it dices. Is it a blade, wait, of glory? <laughs> a blade of glory? Blade of, I'm gonna slice this tomato with this plastic <laughs> credit card. I like that. One, go two, two, three. <laughs> One, two, what? It's a, it's an info. It's not an info motion. It's a commercial. It's this, this blade sharpener called Blades of Glory. And the guy cuts oh, a, yeah. a tomato with a credit card. That's awesome because that's really what you want to do with a credit card, mm -hmm. for yeah. sure. Especially if it's not yours yep. or it's maxed out. <laughs> or if it's maxed out. If it's not yours, max it out. That's then go right. cut it a tomato. <laughs> <laughs> and when, and when your when your stuff comes out, I mean, you gotta shoot it over here so we can, you know, we can put it on our server and get it in our player and and definitely feature it on our show here because and we get we get a lot of people listening to this weird show, and definitely if we tag it the right way, you know, I, I definitely want to draw traffic to it so you could you can see the the profits come on your end. Okay, yeah, I, I mean, I I'm hoping that we're gonna be in your neighborhood soon and. And then uh, I'm just gonna just gonna move into one of your houses for what, however long we're gonna stay. So, that sounds good. Michael's got a camera. Doesn't that sound great? There. I could yep. be the Phantom of your house. That's right, the Phantom of the Oprah. <laughs> I'm hiding the peanut butter. <laughs> hide your dog because he's gonna be have a lot of work going on. Hide your hide, hide your daughters. <laughs> hide your wives. Hide your husband. They raping everybody. <laughs> uh. So do you guys do live broadcasts from 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 shows as well, or oh, yeah. or just from your studio? Yeah, we 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 take the show on the road. Yeah, and we we do some. We did um like five or six shows last year. Yeah, we did we, corrosion awesome. and conformity mm -hmm. and valiant Thor yeah. together. Uh, Sebastian Bach. We did Sebastian. Oh, that's right. You did yeah. do Sebastian mm -hmm. Bach. Uh, I was did? stuck with the gear. I There's didn't a couple get other shows we did, too. You did Kill Devil Hill. Kill Devil Hill. Yeah, we broadcast live there. Um, That's cool because we get the feed right from the board and everything. So you can awesome. actually, and we have a video, you can watch the video of the sh concerts also. The video is usually shooting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but the music comes out pretty good. So maybe when you come through here, we can do that. We do a live broadcast. And we could we could awesome. pump it up so you can get fans around the world that could tune in and watch you perform. Mm -hmm. And you can wear your, and you can wear your your leather duster and kill some vampires. That's right. And who's it? Who's, <laughs> who's in the band right now? 
Um, well, there's actually two lineups. Um, you know, I have a lineup with uh, with a bunch of fairly new guys that are fantastic players, and then I also have a lineup with uh, with a bunch of guys that most people would know. You know, um, there's um, you know, I'm sure you're familiar with Roy Z, which is a phenomenal oh, yeah. guitar player. He played for you know Halford. He played uh, for Dickinson. He, Great producer, he's a too. tremendous producer. Yep. You know, he's, he's produced everybody from Iron Maiden to, you know, Halford to you, you know who. Yeah. Um, and we hooked up with a great drummer. I had no idea how damn good this guy is. Les Warner from the Cult. Oh, okay. Um, the hard-hitting, hard-hitting beast, you know, just at the right kind of sexy groove. You know, most metal drummers are, you know, even if, even if they're heavy, they don't have that thing that I can't even really describe what that is. You know, you just you just know it when you hear it. And he's, he's just a phenomenal um, drummer. And then, of course, you know, we got Jimmy Bain, which I still think is is probably the best yep. metal bass player alive oh, definitely. or dead. I mean, he's just amazing. He got to play with some big-name people for his whole, his whole damn career. Uh, Jimmy? Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. I mean, Jimmy. Jimmy was a rock star before any of us was an itch in our daddy's pants. Yeah. When you think about it, mm-hmm. you know, Rainbow. Yeah. In my opinion, probably one of the greatest hard rock bands ever. I think Rainbow is up there with Deep Purple. Is mm-hmm. up there with um, Led Zeppelin. Up there with Black Sabbath. You know, okay, I mean, so- Richie Blackmore, Ronnie James Dio, Cozy Powell, Don Airey. Mm-hmm. Doesn't get better than that. Oh yeah. What did you? What do you think of the the other? Incarnations of Rainbow. Did you like them with Graham Bonnet and uh, Joey Lynn Turner? Um, you know, Graham Bonnet definitely because I think Graham Bonnet's studio work is just ridiculous. You know, I mean, the, the melodies he comes up with and the harmonies that he comes up with is is, is awesome. You know, he was a completely different animal than Dio. You know, Dio is more of a animal you know, rock and roll animal. It's just, you know, he does it in the studio like he does it live, where Graham Bonnet would craft these, you know, elaborate melodies, which I thought was amazing. But it's really hard to reproduce live, of course. Um, I would say the Graham Bonnet and the and the Dio stuff, that's my favorite Rainbow stuff. I think Joe Lynn Turner is an amazing vocalist. But, you know, for, for my taste, you know, he's he's a... I think he's a bit more of a generic rock singer than than the other two guys before him. I think Graham Bonnet is really recognizable, and of course Dio is a complete you know animal all of its own. I think that those are the kind of singers that I'm mostly drawn to. Not so much the great vocalists. Let's say you know I would prefer Bon Scott over Jeff Tate. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, it's yeah. it's, uh, it's all because about the feel. Bon Scott is just so unique, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I agree. But it's with not you. to say that I don't like Jeff. I, I think Jeff Tate is a, is an awesome singer, ridiculous pipes, you know, super talented. Just say per, personal preference would be more like Bon Scott. What do you think, um, Laporte, the guy who took over um, Jeff's spot in Queensrÿche? You know, I haven't heard him. Oh, but if yeah. he took over Jeff's spot, I'm sure he can yeah. sing. I mean, there's no doubt. Oh, man, he can hit the, the early the early Reich stuff, the Queen of the Reich mm-hmm. and all that stuff. Man, he hits those notes. He's spot on with that stuff. So, mm-hmm. so speaking of him replacing uh, Jeff Tate, was there any bands that you were offered uh, like a slot like that? Not not, not like Queen's Reich, but uh, were there any bands that actually asked you to join? Yes, there were, um, but you know, I mean, if, if I told you who that is, I would for probably forever make myself look like an idiot in front of everybody because people would think, "Why the fuck didn't you do it?" The fix. But I just, but see, to me, I think in a way it's a no lose, a no win situation, yeah. I should say, because so- there's only two ways you can approach a situation like that. Let's say you join Judas Priest. Mm-hmm. You can either do it with your own flair, with your own style, and when you do that, I guarantee you the fans aren't going to like it. Mm-hmm. Even if it's just as good as what happened before, but they're not going to like it because they don't hear it the way they, they, they're used to hearing it, right? 
so in the other the other direction you can go is you can try and sound like the original and reproduce the original sound. But when you do that, inevitably it becomes Rob Halford karaoke. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and I don't mean that in a disrespectful oh, yeah, way yeah. because that's really what you have to do. But it's just it, that's not for me. Okay. You know, I I have to do my own thing. I you know I always have. I can't step into somebody's shoes and and become something other than, than what I do. And I just know if you're joining a bigger band, the fans are going to want to hear that sound. You know, and if it changes, look, you look at a band like Motley Crue, you know, they got another singer in, which you can't, you can't argue this, the simple fact that that guy was a much better singer than Vince Neil. Oh, I love that. I love Karabi. Right. That He's album. a much better singer. But... Yes. The fans, in the end, didn't accept it because it didn't, you know what I mean? It sounded different. Yeah, so so what you're saying is when Menudo and El DeBarge came knocking, you didn't want to change your style for them. The bus boys. No, no it, actually, with Menudo, I was knocking, and they didn't want me. <laughs> well, they kick you out when you're 18 or when you grow hair on your balls. Yeah. Well, that was me at three years. <laughs> <laughs> that, that would have never worked, I guess. So why didn't it work out with El Debarge? You didn't want to get a Jerry Curl? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but yeah, it's you know it's it's a difficult situation. I feel for these guys because no matter what they do, they can do the the best job possible. You know, I mean, I guarantee you right now, even though that guy, even if he blows Jeff Tate out of the water, yeah. the fans would prefer. Jeff Tate being back in the band. Well, it's like um, ACDC. There's still people out there that are diehard Bon Scott fans after of all course. these years with Brian Johnson. They're still, of course, and 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 that's still a different situation because I mean Bon Scott died. I think people are a lot more willing to accept a change like that if if there is no alternative, and. And Brian Johnson really is the only guy, was the only guy at that time that could have taken that place, and I think he did an awesome job, you know. But, yeah, I think probably most people don't want to see change. Once they know a band, once they fall in love with a band, they don't they don't want some other guy to come in. They they might accept it to a point, but there's always that thing like, if, if I had my way, you know, I'd have the original guy back, well, you know. Of course. Cause, well, yeah, there are very few exceptions, but like you said, for the most part, like I mean, people think that Peter Cetera ruined Chicago when he took over the vocal duties, for example. Well, I don't know enough about Chicago to make to make a statement on that. But if, if you know, if you say he did, then damn him. Well, I, I said some people say that. <laughs> <laughs> are you one of them? No, I I like some of I like some of with both with all the different singers. I mean, granted they did get they did have some mushy mushy gayness with Peter Cetera, but they had some mushy gayness with the other guys. So I don't even know how many other singers there were before Peter Cetera. I didn't even know who the hell he was. I know that Peter Cetera <laughs> beat out some gentleman from Germany named Mandy Lyon for the gig, though. But that's also because he knew. Cause that's because he already was. Yeah, was up for all of them. Damn it! <laughs> well, that's because he was up already in the band playing bass, I believe. Uh oh, I hear music again. <laughs> I'm playing some of your stuff in the background for people who are just tuning in, and for the people who are oh, just okay. tuning in right now, we have Mandy Lyon on the phone right now. It's an exclusive, and if you missed the first portion portion of this interview, you missed a lot. You missed you missed how he became the inspiration for Barry Manilow. That's right. And how Mandy Moore's parents named their daughter, who was hot for a minute after Mandy, mm-hmm. and how oh yeah how Van Helsing beat him in arm wrestling and got to take his hat and his <laughs> duster. Nobody beats me at arm wrestling. What are you talking about? <laughs> I bet uh, Booger from Revenge of the Nerds could beat you. <laughs> <laughs> he beat Ogre. I don't even know what we're talking about now. He <laughs> beat Ogre. Well, Sylvester Stallone had that movie about him. Yeah, when he turns his hat backwards, it's on. 
Uh, I turned my head backwards and I turned into someone else. <laughs> All right. Hey, Mandy, we, we got to schedule the keep, but why don't you tell us one more time where we could find uh, everything Mandy Lion related? That's right. Oh, we lost oh I didn't know he was gone. You, is that you, Mandy? Well, okay, that was weird. <laughs> I'm like, I'm, did I say anything to offend anybody? No, you're you know, just, no. We're, we're still talking you up. I thought you hung up because we were talking about how you lost out to Peter Cetera. <laughs> no, I, I was thinking about hanging up when you told people <laughs> about my Barry Manilow days because that was before my sex change and I didn't want anybody to know, but course you put it out there so well actually you put it out there <laughs> did you well, be- I did, well once like i said you see you're so judgmental i mean somebody you know takes it up the butt one time and then of course immediately you're a homo Listen, you, it was you, one time for a lot for, for enough Maybe three times but for, that's it for enough money you're gonna have to pay me to stop sucking that cock <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we for don't... enough money i'll tattoo his name on my dick <laughs> first <laughs> middle and last I think that may be the topic that Blabbermouth is going to run with right there. <laughs> the last sentence. Yeah. This is, um, so what I said was, where can be, we had, we had to get rolling because we got a schedule, but we want to make sure that everybody could find everything uh, Mandy re- Lion related tour dates, music, sex change suggestions. Right. Your Facebook you know, page. Your, vid- your uploaded YouTube video of you doing the Silence of the Lambs wiener dance. I have no idea what you just said. It kept going in and out. We we want to know where we can find every all the information about you, your uh, tour dates, where we can oh, find your music, um, buy your merchandise. Oh, uh, just uh, you know, it, I mean, if you can't do anything else, just go on Google, type in my name, and then shit pops up. But if you want to write this down, or if you have a good memory, you know, of course, we have a Facebook page which is uh, facebook.com forward slash Mandy Lion Rock we still have a MySpace which is myspace.com forward slash Mandy Lion Rock and we have the official page which is Mandy Lion Online.com uh, we have a Reverb Nation uh, I think we have a food bar thingy so uh, we're going to put everything up everywhere so if you stumble across anything you should you should be able to get the, uh, the information but pretty pretty sure that at some point this year we're going to be somewhere close by where where you're going to be able to come out and see nice. us. Nice, awesome. And uh, I'll bring. You know, I'm looking butter. forward to it because I haven't been I haven't been extensively touring for a while and I miss it. Can't wait to get back out there and meet everybody. Yeah, I'll bring the peanut butter. <laughs> <laughs> bring the peanut butter. I bring the tongue. And I'll bring the tapeworms. We have a big party. And that, that that don't make us gay, does it? No, not tapeworms. As long no. as nobody's pulling it out like dental floss. It's only gay if you push back. <laughs> That's right. I'm going to do things to you other people wouldn't do to a farm animal, brother. Thank in you. a very non-gay way. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> that means you're going to let me live. <laughs> Most farm animals die. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Mandy. Hey, on that note, we're going to get going, but I definitely thank you very much for, for being on the show tonight and, and definitely, you know, having fun with us. We really appreciate that. And thank you so much. Well, and, you know, I mean, I, honestly, your show is one of my favorites. So oh, thank, thank you. you for having me again. I we'll, love it. We'll have to have you, uh, when you do get a tour going, you'll have to send us a message or a call so we can put it up, put the link up oh, with some tour yeah. dates for you. Yeah, we'll, we'll pimp the hell thank out of you. it. Thank you. Thank you. I'll keep you informed for sure. Sounds good. Okay, Mandy, have yourself a good one. And once again, thanks again for being on our show tonight. Thanks, Mandy. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Okay. Bye. I'll talk to you soon. Take care. Bye. He's definitely one of my favorite guys to interview. I I, I agree. fun. And here you go, man. Here's some Mandy Lyon for you. We back after this. Thanks again, Mandy, for being on the show. Horns up. Fist in your peanut butter. That's right. Oh, what? 
You have just listened to an exclusive interview on Maximum Threshold Radio. Thanks for listening and please visit us at MaximumThreshold.net.